Today on Karamo. I was young and frustrated and did cheat on him. She had a child with another man, and he refuses to forgive her. You cheated as well, correct? Tip for tat, an eye for an eye. One of which was in my bed. Now we're unlocking the truth. This is a first. Plus, this couple wants to fix their intimacy issues. How often do you have sex now? This year, it's been two or three times. I see over here talking about not my house. OK, I get it, girl. <laughs> Listen, everyone, my next guest, Jalen and Aaron's love story is probably relatable to a lot of you. They were co-workers who fell in love. Mixing work and love can be difficult, though. Jalen says rumors circulating about Aaron led to cheating, pregnancy, and even drug use, which is really hard. Now, they are here to both unlock each other's phones to prove their innocence and love for each other. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and meet my first guest, Jalen. Jalen, come on out. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Can I have a hug? Yeah. You look super cute. Thanks. Okay, I love it. So, um, thank you for being here. Tell me, how did you meet Aaron? Um, well, we actually met um, back in 2019 when I was working with him at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I was a manager, so I kind of Oh, look at your little photo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we went out on multiple dates. Um, and officially said that we were going to be together pretty fast, actually. It was like June of 2019, so... It was, it was fast like, love. It was like a month after meeting. Because y'all are young. You're 22? Yeah, I'm 22. Yeah, so this is young, fast love. Yeah. I understand that We now. met, okay. like, right after I turned 19, so... Got it. <laughs> I was still very young. So you met, you fell in love, and now what's going on with you two? Ugh, it's bumpy. It's literally on and off fighting every other day, every mm. day. Even since coming out here, we fought already twice in the hotel room. Really? So, About yeah. what? Just stupid stuff. Um, it's more of like he brings up my exes a lot, um, especially with my daughter's situation, too. She actually is um, not entirely Aaron's. Um, it was kind of through a one-night stand um, situation. Um, I so can, Aaron's yeah. not the biological no, father? No, he is not the biological father. Okay. Um, and he's known that since a couple months after she was born. Um, we did DNA testing, so... Got it. Um, so you were with him. You had a one-night stand that resulted in a baby. Mm. I want to take it back a little bit before I talk about your child. Why at that moment did you cheat? Um, I cheated due to um, an ongoing conversation that multiple coworkers of mine had with me, saying that he was... Um, cheating or that he was talking to multiple girls that we worked with. Um, so it was kind of like I was young and really frustrated and kind of just took that opportunity and did cheat on him. You said you took a DNA test right after the child was born. Yeah. It was, was it a because months. you had hesitations you knew or did he not know? Like um, it was him um, due to the guy who I had the one night stand with, he actually contacted Aaron through a unknown number and started drama for no reason um, because I would not message him back. He hasn't cared to be in her life, and Aaron's been the only dad she knows. Yeah. Um, that's who she calls dad every day. That's who she loves. That's who she's literally um, always wants to be around. So Aaron is <laughs> taking care of mm -hmm. the, your child, yeah. both of your child now, even though he's not the biological yeah. father. Well, that says a lot about him as a man. Yeah. Give that up. He has come a long way, that's for sure. So how did that affect <laughs> How did that affect Aaron when he found out that he wasn't the biological He father? was very angry. Um, it actually caused him to relapse and go back to using That's pretty harsh idea. drugs. Um, and that ended up hurting me in the end because we did have some very physical fights. Um, they got to the point where it was me almost leaving him constantly or him almost leaving me. And so how long was the physical abuse going on for? Um, it was a, like almost a year. Um, it's. It only happened when he was using drugs. Got it. Um, it do you worry that he'll relapse with drugs? Yes. Um, but now that I do have him in Kansas, because he's originally from Colorado, now that I've brought him down to Kansas with me, um, he hasn't really, I guess, thought about it because he's not around the people who were, I guess, trying to encourage it on him. Because um, it was mainly family members and friends that were 
on top of trying to get him to keep using. Um, his family members he was using mm -hmm. with. Okay, so you moved him with you and your daughter, and you did that to make sure that he stays away from the drugs. Mm -hmm. So how often do you argue about the cheating? It's literally every day. Okay. Um, he constantly brings up my exes, or he'll constantly bring up my daughter's um, biological dad's name. Um, he just throws it in my face constantly. What's making you emotional right now? <laughs> because he throws it in my face, but he's done worse to me. Yeah, here. Like, he um, cheated on me four times compared to my one, and they were all with women that treated me like a friend. They would actually be my friend on the side and still go and sleep with him in the end. It was horrible. So the, the, the one man you cheated on Aaron with was the only man you cheated yeah, on? Yeah, and it was literally one time. Yeah. So I want to ask you this because hearing the physical abuse, hearing the multiple cheating, hearing the mistrust, do you want this work relationship with Aaron to work? Yes, for my daughter's sake. And I I really do love him and I believe he can be a good person. Um, it's just... Well, I'm gonna take a moment. So you want it to work not for you, you yeah. want the relationship to work for your daughter. I kind of want it for both. It's just mainly for my daughter's sake um, because as a kid, I grew up in a very toxic family relationship. So especially with my parents themselves, so. Makes sense. All right, everyone, let's meet Aaron. Give it up for him. Hey, Aaron. Hey, girl, I'm you, man. Come take a seat. All right, I can tell that you're already emotional. What's going on with you? You didn't even tell the full story. Coming up. It wasn't just a one-night stand. It was multiple times. Aaron, you cheated as well, correct? Yes, I did. I heard that you cheated four times? Yeah. Okay. One of which was in my bed while I was at work. She said you cheated on her in her own bed, and you laughed. Why? When I found out Jalen cheated on me, when I went through her phone, it broke me. The pain just made me depressed. I relapsed back on drugs. And it don't help with her always on her phone because I tend to think that she's talking to other people. So I go through her phone, it causes fights with us. We're yelling at each other, emotional, tears coming down our face. Later on when we found out she was pregnant, we did a DNA test and when I got when we got the results back, it destroyed me and I relapsed again. Every day when I look at my daughter, I look and see someone else. I've accepted her daughter as my own. I signed the birth certificate. I'm the one providing for her. It's gonna be hard because if I do leave, that little girl's gonna have a no father figure out. I love that little girl with all my heart. She's one of the main reasons why I stay sober. And well, it wasn't just a one night stand. It was multiple times. Well, Aaron, I want you to tell me really quickly because I want to hear your side of the story. And I can see that you're angry. I can see that you have a lot of emotions around this. So you're saying that there was multiple times she cheated. Talk to me. She cheated on me multiple times with the same person and was talking to other multiple people. So the guy that was a one night stand, it wasn't a one night stand, the affair continued? Well, I didn't sleep with him on multiple occasions. It was more of like a talking situation the, to the make him continued. upset because I thought that he was cheating on me. Why does Aaron think that you're talking to other men? He's constantly thought about it because of what he did find before. I did have a Snapchat that he did not know about that had multiple guys on it. Um, I wasn't actually cheating on him with them. They, a lot of them just flirted with me and it kind of made me feel a little bit better because he was putting me down so much during that time. Um, calling me names, they hurt me a lot. They make me feel like I'm like a piece of crap, so. <sighs> so Aaron, because we're hearing about, we're hearing about emotional, physical abuse, but I kind of want to take a step back with you before I get into that, because I do want to talk about that, is how did you find out that she was cheating? And then when you found that out, how did it make you feel? When I found out she was cheating, I went through her phone one night. I just had a feeling that she was talking to other people. And every time I get a gut feeling, it's always right. 
But even though you went through my phone, you still decided to do the stupid thing and relapse on drugs that same night with your friend. What do you, how do you expect me to feel when you sat there, cheated on me, when I thought the person that was gonna be loyal, faithful, turn around and cheated on me, listening to rumors from people that we worked with. Aaron, you cheated as well, correct? Yes, I did. So when did your cheating start? After I found out she cheated on me. Okay, so it was sort of a tit for tat thing. Yeah. yeah. But then you continued on because I heard that you cheated four times? Yeah. Physically and emotionally? Yeah. Okay. One of which was in my bed while I was at work. So why do you laugh at that? Why do you laugh at that? And I was at least six months pregnant at this time, so the girl knew me, knew I was pregnant, knew we had been together for a while. And, and the person that she cheated on me with was supposedly supposed to be my friend, too. But Aaron, I have a question for you. I asked you directly. She said you cheated on her in her own bed and you laughed. Why? Why? Because tit for tat, an eye for an eye. So you have a history of an addiction. Tell me about when your addiction started. My addiction started at a young age because mm -hmm. I grew up in a fa uh, household that was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Got it. So growing up around it, it was the easiest thing to go to. And when did you start using? I started using when I was nine years old, smoking weed. So now that you're with Jalen and you're here, you said something in the tape that was pretty um, interesting to me as you said, that you think your daughter's the only thing that keeps you sober. Yeah. Tell me about that. Because I don't want her growing up with a dysfunctional family and with a parent that has troubles with addiction and running from problems instead of trying to face them. I got it. It's hard because I don't want my daughter to have to see that from her dad because that's who she adores, like she absolutely adores him. The minute we walk in the door, she goes, Dada. It's every day, she always wants to be around him. And she always has to see, like she's always, a, she's always smiling in pictures with him. I even have videos of her and him dancing. Like she'll sing to him. If he plays music on his speaker, she'll sit there and dance with him. It's like moments like that, that will break my heart if he leaves. So Aaron, what do you want to say to Jalen? I love you. I really do. I love you too. I just wish you would learn to trust me because I promise you that I would not still be here after everything we've been through if I didn't love you. Especially with going through the drug abuse with the physical and emotional abuse, I stayed because I actually love you for you and I want to see you change and be the person you're meant to be. Sometimes I feel like you're changing me. In what way? She makes me feel like she's holding me from my true potential. Because she's trying to push you to be better. Sometimes. But it makes you feel trapped? Yeah. Got it. So now you all came here so that you can unlock each other's phones because you want answers. Aaron, if we find something on Jalen's phone, what does that mean for your relationship? I don't know. And Jalen, for you, if we find something on Aaron's phone, what do you think? I just want to hope that he'll explain to me what happened or why he did it instead of turning it straight into an argument like we always do. Got it. Well, when we come back, we're going to reveal what I discovered when we unlocked both Jalen and Aaron's phone. So make sure you stay with us. Coming up. Every day I have to look at my daughter and see that she don't look like me. So let's go through this. So this is a first. Trying to hide. You were with him. You had a one night stand that resulted in a baby. You didn't even tell the full story. She cheated on me multiple times with the same person. She said you cheated on her in her own bed and you laughed. Tip for tat, an eye for an eye. All right, friends, we are back with Jalen and Aaron. And so, Jalen, you wanted me to unlock Aaron's phone so that you can figure out what's going on with him, correct? Yeah. Um, and so we did that. I had my investigators unlock your phone. And I think this proof 
will be the first step for you all to understand your trust issues, will be the first step in understanding how you all are navigating in a relationship. Because I can already see some stuff, but this will give us more information. So are you ready, Jalen, to see what we unlocked? Yeah. All right, so our investigators, like I said, went through Aaron's complete phone. We scowled it, we went through everything, and there was nothing found on Aaron's phone. You had no interactions with any other women. You were not <laughs> talking to anyone. There was nothing there. That makes me feel a lot better. Why, why does that make you feel better? Because I honestly am worried about some of the people that he is friends and interacts with, like, for, especially friends on Facebook. Facebook seems to be a really bad um, spot because it, it's a lot of girls that... I told you that I wasn't cheating. Mm -hmm. But you know I don't trust your friends, especially the girlfriends that any, you have, because a any, lot of them have flirted with you in the past with me Any around. female that you see talking to me, you get jealous of. But you do the same thing when it comes to guys. If you see a guy look at me wrong, you want to go and fight them instantly. Like, I don't understand why I'm always the bad guy in all of our, like, fights. I'm always the one that gets attacked. I'm always the one that did something wrong. All because of the one situation. But look who's my daughter's dad. Look who's around her and actually wants to be her father figure. Seeing like every day I have to look at my daughter and see that she don't look like me. Jalen, um, we we're gonna you're here as well because Aaron wants you to unlock your phone. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So let's go through this. Um, so this is a first. We were unable to unlock your phone, Jalen, because it was taken apart into pieces. Oh. Um, my, my, my unlock the phone investigators told me and the producers told me that you wanted us to replace the motherboard in your phone, correct? Yeah. But if we replace the motherboard in your phone, then we would no longer have any information in your phone because that's the main hardware that we use to find all the information. Yeah. So why would you want us to replace the thing that would give us the information? Um, and also, why was your phone taken apart? And I'm not accusing, I really wanna no, know right now. No, why my would your phone, phone got broken a couple weeks ago due to a fight that we had. Um, it got kind of tossed out of my hand, shattered, and then my daughter got a hold of it and actually cracked it on the corner screen where the LCD is. Yeah. So it completely destroyed the phone. It got stuck in airplane but mode. But as you know, was as you know my use. producers did say that we would fix those things. Yeah. But even with fixing the things, the phone was still taken apart and not brought back. See, I don't understand. I don't understand that because I, I specifically brought all the pieces back to okay. get it fixed because I do know how to fix it myself. I just didn't have the one part needed to fix it. Okay, okay, listen. I, I, the only reason I'm saying this is because we don't have any answers for you. I don't have any proof to give you to say if there is, um, if there's been cheating or infidelity. So the only thing we have right now is her word. What are you thinking about that, Aaron? I think that it's unfair. Did you know the phone was um, taken apart? Yeah. Okay. But. And you knew that we could fix it. Yeah. Did you know about her asking us to replace the motherboard? No. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts was pretty much the only thing that should have been replaced and to be repaired was the screen, not the motherboard. So what are you trying to hide? Coming up. I'm literally not trying to hide anything. I haven't done anything. Neither of you said you want to be here for each other. You're codependent on each other, even though it's toxic. You are the cop. Get off my stage. There was nothing found on Aaron's phone. You had no interactions with any other women. I'm always the one that did something wrong. Look who's my daughter's dad. Look who's around her and actually wants to be her father figure. Every day I have to look at my daughter and see that she don't look like me. Aaron wants you to unlock your phone. Yeah. We were unable to unlock your phone, Jalen, because it was taken apart oh. into pieces. See, I don't, I don't understand that. I'm literally not trying to hide anything. I haven't done anything. So this, this is what I'm gonna say. This is what I'm gonna say. Because the thing is, is that in this young love, you have to acknowledge 
that asking for a motherboard to be replaced with somebody who already has trust issues can seem fishy. Can yeah. you acknowledge that? Yeah, I can acknowledge okay. that. Great. And that's the thing. And so I'm looking at you two, and I asked you both very specific questions. I asked you, why do you want to be in this relationship? And you said, for your daughter. I asked you, why are you here? And you said, for this, my daughter. For my daughter, because my daughter, I want her to be in a relationship. Neither of you said you want to be here for each other. I want, I want you to take a moment to process that. Neither of you said you want to be there for each other. You're both trying to provide your daughter a life that you're hoping is going to be perfect, it's going to be magical, that's going to allow her to feel like she's being supported. But the problem is, is that that decision, because it's based on codependency, because that's what's happening here, you're codependent on each other, even though it's toxic, even though there's emotional and physical abuse, there's a codependency here that's keeping you all together, but it's not healthy enough for you to stay together to think that you're gonna give your child a better life. Because everything you're doing. I think we can't, I, ne I think necessarily because we can't say that we wanna do it for us is because of the constant fighting and because I don't know if we exactly both think it. that we can not we can or can't do it. I'm, I'm not sure where his mindset's with it, but I know that my mindset's with, I don't like to get accused of things so often, but okay. I do wanna work on us and I've been wanting to work on us for a while now. So you two are making a clear decision to keep a child involved in an unhealthy relationship. Both of you just said you came from homes that were broken, and you two are repeating that cycle by making a choice right now to do that for a child. Because what you're doing is you're forsaking your child by being together. Because that child's gonna grow up in a home where they're watching people being abusive, where they're watching emotional abuse, physical abuse, toxic behavior. Is that what you want for your daughter? No. Is that what you want for your daughter? No. So then the question is, how do you get better? And I don't think either of you know how to get better. Mm -hmm. The first thing for you, and I will say this clearly, is that yes, there is trust issues that happen, but I don't believe that your actions are helping it. I truly don't. Even here from just saying the motherboard, you're not saying, listen, I wanna be transparent. I wanna learn how to communicate. All you're doing is defense. And when you're in defense mode in a relationship, you're never going to be able to heal because all you're doing is saying, no, I'm fine. Don't make me a victim. And I understand why you're in defense mode. You're constantly protecting yourself. Yeah. Are you tired of protecting yourself? I really am, honestly. It's happened since I was younger. I've always had to like take a step back and try and find a way to protect myself. And now I feel like I'm trying to find a way to protect me and my and daughter. Your daughter. I, can, I know that. I know that. I know that. And it hurts. Because I, I shouldn't have to be the one to do that. He should either have to be the bigger person and try and figure out a way, a, another method of not fighting, but I like have to tell you talking this. about it. But he I'm just gonna, instantly goes to fighting. But I'm going to tell you something right now is that unfortunately, I do believe you're a great father, and I do believe you have the intentions, and you even said it. You're intimidated by the potential she sees in you. You're intimidated by the fact that she wants you to be better, that she wants these things. You said you make, you, these are your words, you said it makes you feel like you're being stifled, you can't be yourself. You don't have the tools, and I'm sorry. And so what's happening is that you're in a relationship and you're trying your hardest right now. I can see it even in your eyes right now. You are trying your hardest to become a man, right? Yeah. I can see it, you wanna be a better father. But I think you can't use your daughter and you can't use this relationship to be the catalyst for you to be better. You actually have to do that work on your own. And that's the first step you gotta take. That's are what you I scared, try to tell them. Are, are you scared to take that step on your own? Why? It's gonna change. Yeah, I know. He likes to take his anger out on the people he loves. That's how he usually does it. I'm not going to make an excuse for it. I don't think he's trying to take his anger out on the oh, person he loves. I think the only emotion that you know how to respond to is usually anger. Because that's how you were raised. I get it. I understand. But the thing is, is that you have to make a decision of what you want to do for your daughter and being in protective mode. These are decisions that you can't make right now. You need to sit with this question. I'm going to give you the question right now. Do I deserve to continue to be in protective mode for myself and for my daughter? And the question you need to ask yourself is, am I strong enough to try to figure out how, ch how to change on my own? So you two have work to do separately. 
I'm not telling you to break up. What I'm saying is that you have to acknowledge you have to do work separately. And if you can't do the work separately for yourselves, you both love that little girl, do it for her. <laughs> Did you make that commitment? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right, everyone. Listen, when we come back, we'll be back with more Couples in Crisis. Coming up. Me and my husband have completely different love languages. He has a big need for physical touch, sex. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I get home, I just wanna cuddle. And how often do you have sex now? This year. Stop it. It's been two or three times. What about my needs? We're talking about your needs, your needs, your needs. Uh, hello, I have needs too. Girl, I know you wanna get your needs met. <laughs> Grace and Contrell met in person after months of talking on a dating site. They were married within five months. Now, that's some fast love, all right? And Grace found out she was pregnant. A few months after they said, I do, marriage wasn't easy. Grace has a problem with her husband, Contrell, constantly wanting sex. And Contrell says his physical needs are not being met. They reached out to get my help to fix their issue so that their marriage doesn't turn into one of those unfortunate statistics. So let's meet Grace to find out more about this. Grace, come on out. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Hi. How are you? You're so cute, my oh, boy. Thank you. How are you doing? Great. Yes. Thank so, you. Grace. Yes. Tell me, why do you need my help? I just heard it, but tell me why you need my help. Okay. Me and my husband have completely different love languages. Uh -huh. I don't know if I always can speak it. Plain and simple, he has a big need for physical touch, sex. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired, I'm exhausted, the last thing on my, I mean, that's what it is. When I get home, I just wanna cuddle and period. He wants to cuddle and then like do a little more. Yeah. But I'm tired. Okay, I get that. Listen, what, listen, <laughs> listen, she said I'm tired, okay? She said I'm tired, <laughs> period. That was it, in <laughs> a sentence. So what is it that's going on in your day, why you feel exhausted, why you feel like intimacy is not something you want to engage with? Okay, so I work, I wake up early, we have a daughter, get her ready for school, I go to work, and also he works late, so he comes home at like 11.30. I'm like in second stage of sleep, snoring, <laughs> drooling, and he doesn't care. He will wake me up. So tell me about your relationship in the beginning. Right, first, we met on eHarmony. Uh -huh. He texted me that night, and then history is made. So we meet, and we've both done the long relationships. Yeah. So we knew what Aww. we wanted. Oh, my goodness. We knew what we wanted <laughs> in our relationship. So we got married within, like, five months. Yeah. And then um, had our baby. And so then what happened with the intimacy level? Because you obviously were having sex <sighs> before. Right, I feel like he thought I was an Energizer Bunny or a Bend It Like Beckham and just wanted <laughs> so much more than I was willing to give at the time. And again, our schedules played a big role. Uh -huh. He got home late, I went in early. At the beginning of the relationship, yeah. how often would you say were you having sex? Mm, oh my gosh, like three times a week? Three times a week, okay. Yeah. And, and how long did that last, you think? A month, a year? Maybe two months? Two months, Three because months? then you got pregnant within five months. Mm -hmm. So then now the pregnancy, were you having, uh, were you having intimacy issues no, during so the pregnancy? No, so here's the thing. When I was pregnant, I had a high risk pregnancy. So I'm like, don't even look at me, don't touch me. Okay. We need to make it to the end. Got but it. that was hard because I was scared. I wanted to have my baby. And so now you're at this space where you've been together for two months, sex is great, mm -hmm. you get pregnant, you have a complication, and now sex stops. Yeah. The baby comes, how is the sex life, intimacy? Oh, okay. I'm just tired at You're this tired. point. So now a combination of I'm tired, but also I felt like I didn't, not want to, but I was just like, ugh, like, no, you know, not ugh, but just like, I'm focused here and like, I want romance. What about my needs? We're talking about your needs, your needs, your needs. Uh, hello, I have needs too. Have you tried to address this with your husband? Yes. And what happened? He says like, well, he, he's gonna say, he says, well, I do the dishes and I sometimes do the laundry, so I'm helping you out. But that's not it, that's not uh, like not enough, but uh, it's more than that. Yeah. So then it becomes an argument, and then yeah. we hurt feelings, and yeah, I got it. better. You though. tell my producers you're a passionate speaker. Oh yes, okay. I talk with my hands, I'm real loud. Got to it. him, you have an attitude, why are you yelling at me? Yeah. But that's just how I am, I'm just, this is how I talk. Yeah, so the communication, so the mm. lack of intimacy is also bleeding into the communication. Yeah. And I got a real question for okay. you, because you have your desires and needs. I do. Let's be real. Yeah. You get horny too. Okay. Okay. Like, and I, we're, we're adults here. So what things do you think you need to work through in your relationship? 
um, effective communication and just kind of being able to compromise realistically. I ask him what is the appropriate amount, he's like five times a week. Who? Where? Not me. I can't do it. And I think just realistically what works for us and what's fair. Like if I'm sick, don't try to touch me. Like have, just be able to say not tonight and that's okay. She still loves me. Just, I gotta kinda, you know. Makes sense, listen, I, I, I get it. Yeah. And I think that this communication is something that we can talk about. Listen everyone, when we come back, we're going to meet Grace's husband, Contrell, to hear how he feels about the marriage. So stay with us. Coming up. Because my mom's a pastor, there's a conflict of interest. Yeah, a big one. You're not gonna talk to your mom about hey, no. no! Hold on! How did that make you feel going to your mother-in-law talking about your sex life? You are the power. Get off my stage! Level. He wanted so much more than I was willing to give at the time. And also, he works late, so he comes home at like 11.30. I'm like in second stage of sleep, snoring, <laughs> drooling, and he doesn't care. He will wake me up. I ask him what is the appropriate amount. He's like five times a week. Who? Where? Not me. I can't do it. Okay, friends, we have been talking to Grace. Let's meet her husband, Control, right now. Come on out, Control. Yeah, take a seat. All right, so Kentrell, you heard your wife backstage. How do you feel about what she says? Okay, so there's a few things that were untrue that I have to clear up. Okay. The first thing she said that I get home late and I wake her up for intimacy. That's not true. Okay. The next thing she said was that in the beginning of our marriage, she, it was like more frequent. I don't, I, I don't remember if she said three times or four she times. She said three week. times. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not true. Uh, intimacy has been a problem from the very beginning of marriage. Uh, from, from the, basically from I do. When we got married, he thought we would come home and literally get to it. He means that, cause when we got married, we had a blow up mattress, we just got married. He, literally I walked in the door, and he's like, tackles me like a 79er onto the blow up mattress. The knife was on the floor cause we opened in boxes. The knife slides into the blow up mattress and pops the blow up mattress. And I'm like, so you figure once you get married now, exactly, and that, sex, and that was not was the like, case. Okay. So I heard from my producers that you tried therapy. Tell me about this therapy. Okay. No, no, no. We didn't try actual therapy. My mom, like the free, so my mom's a past, our pastor. So she does couple classes. She tried to therapy us. Is that the word therapy us? Yeah. But the issue is because my mom's a pastor, there's a conflict of interest. Yeah, a big one. You're not gonna talk to your mom about that. No. Hold on. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disrespect the pastor. I'm not gonna do it. But what I'm gonna say is. How, how did that make you feel going to your mother-in-law talking about your sex life? I was like, yes, yeah, yes, there's a conflict interest, and yes, it's extremely uncomfortable for me. Control, what do you think, how, what are your thoughts on your communication? Um, it, I don't communicate often enough, and so on, that's a problem on my end, but when I do communicate, I feel like my feelings get dismissed, or whatever I care about gets dismissed, especially if she feels like she's not getting her desires met. And on her end, I feel like when she communicates, she communicates in a very disrespectful manner. Okay. You don't have to insult, okay. you don't have to belittle. Um, Do you and insult that's him? And while yelling, that's just disrespectful. Do you insult him? I used to, yeah. What would you say? You don't even do it for me in the bedroom. Immature comments that, but immature things you would say that aren't true. And I would say to him, like, I don't mean that. You, she literally told me that everything she says she means, because I asked her if she was just saying things out of anger he, at one point. he asked me when I was upset. Of course I'm gonna be like, I said what I said. But yeah. that's because I'm mad, not because I mean it. Like, that's just the case. Oh my gosh. And how often do you have sex now? Well, it is very inconsistent, but this year... Stop it. It's been two or three times. But it's always been inconsistent. A lot of relationships that are in, have been together for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, for some reason, the, there's a point where the relationship just gets into a sense of like, we're not having sex anymore. We start cohabitating as roommates. It seems shocking to y'all, 
but this is a norm in America. And that's why I'm very proud of y'all for being vulnerable enough to talk about this, because I know somebody watching this is going, look, oh, she over here talking about now in my house. Okay, I get it, girl. I saw you. I saw you. We got you right there in the green. We got you. She said, not in my house. Okay. You're making it harder for me, Okay, she's she making it harder for you, oh, sis. But, but in all sincerity, this is really something that happens in a lot of people's relationships and home. So, Kentrell, I want to ask you, what do you want to say to your wife before we go to break? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I want to say obviously she knows this, but I don't know if she knows this. I love her. I'm extremely attracted to her. So, I desire her. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways that's, I probably said, the main way that I feel loved is through intimacy and respect. And those are two of the biggest problems that has been throughout our marriage. Uh, her disrespecting me and then rejecting me. There was a point where she said that, you know, I, I told her I wanted it five times a week. I've never put that demand on her. I never said five times a week. There was a time where I tried to compromise and say on oh, my days off, which I have days off two or three times a week. But that's pressure. If you say every day off, let's just say it's a Monday. What if that Monday was the hardest Monday for me? As soon as I laid down, I'm like, oh my God, this is Monday. There's two things that I want to bring up really quickly. Yeah. You just said, I feel rejection. And then you said, I feel pressure. When you have rejection and pressure as a combination in a relationship, it becomes disastrous. Coming up, you still feel intimidated that you can't even pleasure yourself. She's literally told me that it's a problem yes. and she, ha she doesn't want me doing it. Intimacy for me starts outside the bedroom. So there was like a lack of sex in the beginning. So you figure once you get married now, exactly, and, we and, that, sex, and that was then not it was the case. Like, because my mom's a pastor, there's a conflict of interest. Yeah, a big one. You're not gonna talk to your mom. Go go go. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. I am talking to Grace and Contrell, a beautiful married couple, about their communication issues that is leading into their intimacy issues. All right. So I have another question for you. And it's going to be a little bit more private, but I, I really do need to know this. Um, when you all self-pleasure or masturbate, do you tell each other, or is it something that you do privately? Privately. Privately, for you? Pri for me? Privately. 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 She's literally told me that it's a problem, yes. and she ha she doesn't want me doing it, so. Okay. Yeah, I So So this So this is, I'm glad that I asked this question. Yeah. So then why wouldn't you want him engaging in even self-pleasuring? Because I feel like that a component of that is pornography. And I think that that, like, cause you know, that's part of it. And I don't like that. I feel like it can mess with self-esteem. Like, cause what you watch, first of all, it's fake. And then you got to raise the standards. And I feel like it feeds that but, lust but, more. But, but I'm asking this because, I'm, I'm asking this because yeah. you're telling me that you're not engaging with sex with your, your, your man. Mm -hmm. You're saying me and my husband don't have sex because I'm tired. Our communication's not right. Our love languages aren't there. But then you're also saying now I don't want you to engage in this because I have a problem with this. I say like blatantly, like I don't need to feel, the but you know what I'm saying? I'm right next to you. Like I, I think and blatantly, like you said, if I don't see it, okay. But also I think another way around it, I suggest, is maybe, you know, intimacy for me starts outside the bedroom. So I do believe that there's a part of this where you're tired, mm -hmm. but I also believe there's a part of this that you're not sharing that I need you to be open with me if I can really help. 100%. What is the intimacy issue? So for me as well is I feel oftentimes I'm ignored. I feel like I was a wife of convenience. He doesn't really concern himself with my stuff I like. I want a relationship, I not just it. the wife and husband title. You go to work, we have sex, we have meals. Whenever yeah. she wants to do something, I do not tell her no. The problem comes in where she'll say, you want to go walk around shopping with me? I say, Sure, if you, you want to go. She's like, no, oh, no, but do you want to go? So, no, now, no, so no. now she's putting me in this position where I either have to lie to her or I have to be honest and say, I don't want to go, no, but, but I will can, go I to something? make you happy. This, this is a reframing issue. Yeah. You have to reframe your train of thought. Mm -hmm. She's asking you, do you want to put me first? Yeah. Do you want to make my needs a priority? Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to think. So when she says something that you're like, nah, I don't want to do this. You know I don't want to do this. Take out the physical and say, what is she emotionally asking me? 
because she's telling you right now that her intimacy is attached to her emotions. Yeah. And right now she doesn't, she feels emotionally detached from you. And I 100% understand that. Like I said, we, you know, we had counseling with her mom. She, and we're going to throw said, that pastor out of the way. <laughs> Pass, hold on, put the camera on me. Pastor, no disrespect, I'm sorry, but we're throwing all that out the way, okay? All right, so. How would you feel if there was a little bit more of like sex thing, communication like that? Oh, I, I would definitely like that. Are you willing to do something to sort of like preheat yourself? Yeah. What response do you need when you give him these sort of gestures, th digital gestures? What response do you need to make you feel like it's sexy? Um, just com confirm, affirm, and be like, oh, okay. Got it. And so you hear that. She gonna start doing a little something <laughs> so that you can start feeling like some ways, all right? Did you hear that? Yeah. So your wife just said she gonna send you a little something, something. So what's the response you're gonna give now? Uh, confirm, affirm. Confirm and affirm, okay. <laughs> Listen, that's a good step. <laughs> Listen, I do believe y'all can get better, yeah. but I think the thing is is that I think, I think the communication is gonna have to work. We're gonna have to do some more communication. Don't go back to the pastor, I love you. Don't go back to the pastor and talk okay. about this. Listen, everybody, come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing, all right? I love you all. <laughs>